join me in our call to worship. And you will notice that this is written uh, by a playwright. <clears throat> Do you seek Jesus? Do you wish to hear his word for you this morning? Do you want to be changed? Do you seek transformation? Um, welcome, children of God, with all your contradictions. You are welcome here. With all our contradictions, we come to worship God. Amen. You're, in you're invited to stand in body or in spirit as we sing hymn number 356, verses 1, 4, and 5. Let us draw near to God with sincerity of heart and full assurance of faith. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let us join in prayer. Lord of truth, you see us. You see our hypocrisy. We see some of it, not all. We see it in others, and surely they see it in us. And still we judge. Forgive us. Set us right. Help us to find a way to live that seeks to walk in your truth without cursing others who are also trying to find their way. Let us continue in silent prayer. Amen. For God so loved the world that the only Son was given, that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might know life through him. Believe the good news of the, of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Forgiven. And let all God's children say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Turn to a neighbor, somebody who you did not have a place to call, and 
get up, make eye contact, and there's some of the pieces. And also with you. You may be. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Draw us close, Holy Spirit, as the scriptures are read and the word is proclaimed. Let the word of faith be on our lips and in our hearts, and let all other words slip away. May there be one voice we hear today, the voice of truth and grace. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from James chapter 1, verses 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If they think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Here is the And our second scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 through 8, 14 and 15, and then concluding with verses 21 to 23. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of the disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the, to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that, can, that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil attentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So apparently, when you or I walk into a new place, a new setting, it could be a store, uh, any kind of gathering, uh, we subconsciously, unconsciously are, are assessing whether we feel safe, whether we fit in, whether we feel comfortable. I read this in an article years ago. And I, so years ago, when I first moved to New Jersey, 
and we were checking out the area. Uh, my husband and I went to the Short Hills Mall and it wasn't, I wasn't there very long where all of a sudden I went, oh, I am underdressed for, for this mall. This is an upscale mall and I am not dressed appropriately. Now, nothing, nobody, nobody snubbed me, but I don't know if you've ever had that happen where you, where you go into a store and, and why this matters because the folks who are there decide whether you're worth their time. Right? They're not gonna, they're not gonna waste their time on somebody who they don't think there's gonna be sale at the end of it. Right. Uh, that has happened to me a handful of times during my life. For some people, that's their that's their reality. That happens to them all the time. And I have never ever had somebody follow me in a store just to make sure that I don't steal anything. We make judgments based on how people are dressed. Uh, we also make note of, of when we walk into a room, are there other people who look like me? Do I feel safe? Do I feel comfortable? Do I fit in? Can I relax? So what do we do? We tend to stick to places where we feel comfortable. By the way, that happens in, in church sanctuaries as well, when people walk in for the first time. Do I feel safe? Do I fit in? Are there folks here who look like me? And it's not just race or ethnicity, it's also class, which is to say wealth. It's how we dress. For women, uh, same article, it's shoes and handbags. That's how, that's, how we, that's how we judge, we look. And I overheard a conversation years ago. A, uh, I was at a conference and there, another woman pastor was had an interview for a large steeple church, which is to say a large church, a wealthy church. And she had an interview coming up and this older woman, wise woman, very practical said to her, before your interview, go out and buy an expensive handbag, like what, a coach bag. She's like, don't mention it. Don't bring attention to it at all. But when you come in, uh, Sit down, put it by your feet so they can all see it. And then they'll know that you're one of them. She got the job, by the way. And I, and I remember her first name and I Googled her to see where, where she is at now. And she's at another large people church. It worked, but oh my gosh, that kills me. It might be real, but it kills me. I think Jesus would have us wrestle with that. And by the way, I promise not to look at anybody's handbags when at the end after we're served. Our scripture passages have us wrestle with whether as a church we make people feel comfortable or not. Uh, what are the conscious and unconscious barriers that we set up? Conscious barriers. Uh, maybe you all know the story of, of Gandhi. Conscious barrier. He goes to a church, Christian church, and he's turned away at the door because of the color of his skin. That's a conscious barrier. You know, we need to be called on the way that we act. Oh, and by the way, and you know, Gandhi at the end of the day said, I'm cool with Jesus, the two Christians. We need to be called on the way that we act as gatekeepers and decide who we're comfortable with and who's sitting in our midst. Uh, years ago, I um, had gone to a multicultural conference uh, sponsored by the denomination. I came back and had lunch with pastors who were serving in communities there where there was a growing Hispanic Latino population. And one of the pastors in one of those towns said, you know, he, he goes, I just don't think they would feel comfortable with us. Uh, he goes, you know, we are, we are a well-to-do congregation. And I just, um, I just think you know, like it's not worth the effort because they're not going to feel comfortable in our environment. And that's, I, you know, something that we need to wrestle with as churches. So in Gennesaret, in our scripture passage, the Pharisees and the scribes asked the question, why do your disciples not eat, uh, not wash their hands before they eat? Which sounds like common sense. Who doesn't wash their hands before they eat? Uh, but you know when somebody says something but they really mean something else? That there's more to it? So the, you know, the question is, is the tradition of the elders no longer valid? What's really being said? Is it okay to eat with Gentiles now? Is that who we are? Those people. The Pharisees were part of a popular reform movement in Judaism. They believed that the purity 
codes that the priests followed should be followed by everyone. Uh, and remember, Jesus is a Jew, so this is like in-house bickering that's going on. Observance of purity laws determine who's in and who's out, who gets to participate and who doesn't. Gatekeeping. If you hang out with those folks, then you can't hang out with us. Jesus calls the Pharisees and scribes out on, her, on their hypocrisy. The, and the Greek literally means actors with masks. Uh, we didn't uh, read this in, in the verses that, that got admitted so that the, the scripture lesson wasn't too long of a read. But he calls them out on their practice of, the, of donating all of their money and like the, the, willing their inheritances to the temple, which will provide for them now and in the future. But what they're sacrificing is providing for their parents moving forward. And I, I was amazed that this came up this week because the, um, the daily devotion group on Wednesday morning, the, the scripture passage was honor your father and mother. And we talked about how the social, the, the social safety net for most of history, it's only recently that we've uh, gone to this nuclear family model, but it used to be if, if, if you had, if somebody needed to be taken care of, if the family did it, right? If you, who's taking care of the kids while, while you're out working in the fields, your, your parents or your grandparents, if you have a special needs child or an, a, an adult with special needs, who's taking care of them? The larger family. Right? And so that's why the, the prophets in the Old Testament are railing on, on the people of faith saying, you need to take care of the orphans and the widows. Because that's where the social, the, the safety net, they're, they're the holes. The folks who have nobody to take care of them, they don't have the family, you need to be their family. You know, according to scripture, it is not enough just to care, care for your own. We need to look around and notice those who are not being cared for, who don't have the family to take care of them. And you need to take care of all the children of God. So Jesus says to the Pharisees, you hypocrites. And, and by the way, the, the, this is also interesting. The Pharisees were known for their adherence to tradition that was not necessarily scriptural, which made me think of, you know, in-house bickering that we have in the, in the Christian church today. There are traditions that put a huge emphasis on tradition and Protestants were known for where is it in scripture, right? And so Jesus is saying here, you have your traditions, but hey, God's commandments honor your father and mother, that takes priority, that takes precedence. So giving all your money to the church, it might be honorable, it might be legal, but it's not okay. Not at the expense of taking care of your family. So then Jesus goes into teaching mode with the crowd and he says, you know, it's not that what goes in you that defiles, it's what, it's what comes out of you that defiles. And then privately with the disciples, he unpacks that and he gives this long laundry list of things that defile. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, which means greed, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, which I, uh, once I figured out what this word means, I, I, I love this word. Licentiousness is giving license. It's, you know, it's when you, you know, when you decide, okay, I know there's this rule, but for me, in this instance, we're going to make an exception, you know, taking license, um, envy, slander, pride, and folly. And I looked up folly, it could be translated like foolishness or recklessness or thoughtlessness when you're not thinking about other folks. That's folly. Now, how many of these things have you done? We can make it like an intranet poll. Put a star next to each of the ones that you're guilty of, right? Uh, we're all called out by that list. We are all called out by that list. So we start off with Jesus, um, you know, Jesus, why are you hanging out with those people to now, why are you hanging out with us? If purity is the priority, and purity was not Jesus's priority, Jesus, purity is not God's priority. It's not about who's in and who's out. And we do this all the time. But God sees all of us as God's children, imperfect, 
hypocritical, and profoundly loved. Now, what's um, ironic to me is uh, that in our desire to be inclusive, sometimes we have to fake it until we make it. I'm a big believer in fake it till you make it, which is, you know, you might not be feeling it, but you're going to do the right thing regardless, right? And so that, it, that whole idea of hypocrites, like actors with masks, well, sometimes just do the right thing, even if, you know, is it coming from a pure place? No, but it's the right thing to do. So just do it. I am not saying, Jesus is not saying that all behavior is acceptable in Christian fellowship, uh, but it does mean that everyone is welcome. Meanness is not okay. Bullying is not okay. Greed is not okay. Gossiping is not okay. But in deep humility, we realize that we all come to Christ's body, to Christ's fellowship, to Christ's table, and sinner in need, sinners in need of salvation. And next week, really interesting, we have the Syrophoenician woman uh, challenging Jesus on the scope of his mission. But today, he calls us out on feeling superior or our lack of humility and our human tendency to close ranks when we should always be, you know, how can we, how can we extend our circle even larger? How can we make room for one more? There's a lovely Mark Miller song. I don't know if you're familiar with his music. He's a musician. He teaches at Drew University. He's a United Methodist and he has these gorgeous, gorgeous anthems. And one is called Draw the Circle Wide. And the lyrics are, draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song. No one stands alone. Standing side by side, draw the circle. Draw the circle wide. So who is standing on the fringes just waiting to be invited to join the larger group? And who is outside who doesn't think they would ever be welcomed on the inside? Let us honor God with our lips, with our hearts, with our minds, and a deep desire for the world to know that God's love is for every hypocrite, including you and me. In Jesus' name, amen. You are invited to uh, remain seated. As we sing, help us accept each other, which is number 437 in the red hymnal.
foundation of faith is Psalm 15. O Lord, who may abide in your tent, who may dwell on your holy hill, those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their heart, who do not slander with their tongue and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath, even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. And now we are going to be treated to some lovely music at the time of the service where we would normally be passing the plate, which we're not going to be doing this morning. But as a reminder, if you have, uh, you, there are three ways to give, either by putting money in the plate at the back of the service by sending your money to the church in, in a check, setting up bill pay, or doing online giving. Um, I'm personally a fan of set it and forget it. Uh, and uh, and doing things that way. Your generosity helps make mission and ministry possible. So may you feel joy in, in your gifts to, to the work and the ministry of this church. <laughs> wisdom, how best to use 
uh, people's generosity, the sacrifice of, of their finances. Um, also, Lord, bless the, the sacrifice of time, of energy, of all the ways that people um, give their lives over to you in service to not just not just this church community, but the, but the larger community. Bless all that we say and do with your grace. Uh, we need you, we confess, and thank you so much for all the ways that you are able to just create beauty out of this, the smallest things, the smallest acts of generosity and kindness. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. And again, let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, there is so much. <clears throat> there is so much going on in the world uh, that needs attention. There's too much suffering. Lord, help us to know what we can do to help. At the very least, Lord, we offer our prayers. Lord, we pray for the people of Haiti. We pray for the people of Afghanistan, for those who are fleeing, for those who are staying, for those who live in fear and dread. Lord, we pray for our nation's leaders. Guide them. And Lord, we pray that, um, Lord, I'm gonna pray for a miracle that, that our nation's leaders might learn to work together. It's not about my side winning or your side winning. It is about uh, what is good for your people. Help us to come together when it, when it is important, when it counts, and help us to stop demonizing one another. And it has, you know, it has, um, it's not just in Washington, it's in our homes. Lord, remind us who we are and whose we are. Call us to prayer, call us to love. And make a way out of no, no way, Lord. We pray for families that are divided by politics, by vaccine, whether to, to vaccinate, not to vaccinate, how are we going to do family gatherings. Lord, we lift all of that up to you. Make a way out of no way. Lord, we pray for those who are preparing for the coming storm, folks in Louisiana and Florida. Lord, we pray for the folks who are going to show up, the first responders. We are so, remind us. I mean, we're, we get thrown into our face every day, the ugliness, but we're also capable of so much beauty and so much good. Lord, we thank you for all those who sacrifice of themselves or sacrifice themselves for the, for the well-being of others. Lord, we pray for those that we know and love who are suffering. We name them in our hearts. Lord, sometimes we're very clear about you know, what they should do. And sometimes we have no idea. Lord, we lift all of that up to you, praying for your wisdom and guidance. Lord, we pray for Curtis, for William, for Paul, for Pedro, for Yvonne's mom, for Sydney, for Dorothy and Ken and Larry and Mercedes and Gail. Lord, you know what's going on with each of them. Lord, may they sense your spirit and presence with them. Lord, we pray for all those who are mourning. We pray for Valerie, who lost her father. We pray for peace of body, mind, and spirit for her and for all those who need to know that, that they are never alone, that you are with, and that they have a family of faith who will walk beside them. Lord, we pray for the new school year. We pray for safety. 
and for all those you know, as it's you know lord you know, that sense of dread uh we're fighting against it lord give us hope remind us that you will give us what we need to make it through each and every day we will claim that promise lord and we will keep on keeping on because we know that you are and that you are with These are just some of our prayers. We are grateful that in scripture it says that, that your spirit intercedes for us, praying for us in ways that we don't even know that we need it. Thank you, Lord. We're also incredibly grateful for the gift of your son, Jesus, who, who loves us enough to call us out on the ways that, you know, that we're completely blind, but then, you know, helps dust us off, puts us back on the path, and promises to walk with us. We are grateful for the prayer that he taught us and that we can pray together in one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You are invited to stand in body or in spirit to sing one verse of God be with you, number 840 in your hymnal. together in our mother's wounds would die for us and did in the person of Jesus Christ, but is with us in power and spirit this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.